Hi everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of the series in which I discuss Diana Ross' most important albums and the ones that define her career in a very, very special way. So I've chosen 12 albums and today we are talking about an extraordinary album called Touch Me in the Morning. This is the reissue by Motown in 2009. And as I always say, Motown makes the most extraordinary reissues because they really work and the photographies um, that they choose and the uh, the music that they add, the, previ the previously unreleased material is just really, really extraordinary work. And it helps us to comprehend where the album comes from. And in this case, it's quite important because Diana Ross main and first idea was to make an album uh, entitled To The Baby and that was dedicated to Rhonda and then afterwards because she worked in between two pregnancies uh, for Tracy and then Rhonda was born. That's why uh, one of the songs that she recorded um, is specifically uh, intended for a little girl because she knew by then that um, she had a little girl. She didn't know about Tracy yet. So um, what happened is that Diana Ross had done Lady Sings the Blues, the album did extremely well in the movie as well, but she lost the Oscar. And so Barry Gordy decided the new direction was for Diana Ross to become an absolute number one recording artist. And so because of that, he abandoned several projects um, that were in the making, Diana and Marvin, the live album at Caesars Palace, but more importantly, the album To The Baby, which was so close to Miss Ross' heart, she actually produced two songs um, on the album, and it was her very first time producing music. So... Um, uh, what uh, the uh, the first idea was to have a number one hit single, and that is when they went to Ron Miller and Michael Maser, who wrote "Touch Me in the Morning." Uh, they explained that the idea of the phrase "Touch Me in the Morning" came to them, but they didn't know exactly what it meant, and so. Um, uh, it, the the song was written and it's a very, very beautiful love song and a very sad song because it's about leaving, abandoning uh, love and saying goodbye, but still a bit like Remember Me, um, you know, parting in a, in, a, in a very good way. And as we know, Diana Ross, she divorced a few times, but it's always been done so elegantly. Uh, Tracy even says that um, she wasn't even sure, she didn't even realize that there was a real divorce because everything, they all got along so well and uh, her dad, you know, was in her life as well as her mom. And we know that Diana Ross is the most incredible mother. As I told you in a previous video, as a very young girl, you can say she was a Supreme um, at the, with Florence Ballard, so the really early Supreme, she said, I want to have six children in an interview. And she knew from the beginning, while at that time you could have really imagined that Diana Ross could have been worried about, you know, becoming famous and, and having fun and traveling and buying clothes. So you know how important to Diana Ross her family is. Now, this album uh, then uh, took on a completely different turn because Touch Me in the Morning became the title of the album, To the Baby was completely shelved, and then just a few songs were taken from the previous recordings and that were going to fit inside this album. Now, the album cover is also a, a bit of a heartbreak because it is a picture of Diana Ross when she is pregnant in her swimming pool in her Beverly Hills home and they kind of faded the picture completely um, in order for you not to see that she's pregnant because of course this is a love album you know she's singing uh, touch me in the morning so it's more of a single woman rather than than um, than a pregnant uh, young woman and so when I first bought the album as a child I started buying uh, the Diana Ross albums when I was 11 you could not find and this is the LP era you could not find touch me in the morning surrender or everything is everything you just couldn't find them they were not re-edited and they were very difficult to find you know in 76 75 at 
in, in my time. And I found Touch Me in the Morning in a record store in Morocco, but it was a um, another print and the picture uh, was the picture which I'm uh, putting on the board. Now I know exactly how to place them of Diana Ross from the mahogany um, uh, photo session with all of the uh, ostrich feathers and the beret with the little a sequin buckle. And I remember even my father said, touch me in the morning, dress like that. No one's going to touch Diana Ross. She's so perfect. And the back cover uh, always drove me crazy. In fact, I put a sticker on it um, because it was the picture of a couple kissing that had nothing to do with Diana Ross, kissing in the sunset. And I thought, how stupid you know to make an album cover and there's only a front and the back and not use another picture of Diana Ross she's so stunning and you know who wants to see them plus I thought they were hippie looking you know like from the you know hippie style and just outdated so I hated the back cover of this album but that was the album um, print that I had because this one was kind of out of print I guess and I just never I saw it much much later on so the second song on this album is All of My Life. It was a hit in the UK. Um, Touch Me in the Morning was a number one hit single. And uh, the, the whole album sold 700,000 copies. So it was a huge success for Miss Ross. And the single was also a huge hit all over the world. And All of My Life was a hit in, in the UK. Um, and this is where the album takes a complete different turn because now, and this is again in my head, when I say it's factual, it's factual. When it's the way I feel things, you can, you know, it's just, there's nothing true or untrue. It's the way I feel. But um, it, it turns into a, a, a letter, an open letter to Barry Gordy because she's really talking about her relationship with Barry. Because Touch Me in the Morning, um, all of my life, uh, th she is talking about her relationship and it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. It will remind you a little bit of the way the Carpenters um, music was recorded, the way the musically it could re remind you of that. But it's also just very pop and very modern for the time and it's just this love ballad. The third song is We Need You, it's written by Deck Richards in the um, in the album. Uh, in the liner notes, he explains that he it really is a song written uh, when he saw Diana Ross just very sad and um, uh, coping with the difficulties of being a young mother and this incredible career that she had to deal with. And um, the, the words, we need you, came to him. And so this is really, if you listen to it, um, we need you, you're the strength, you're the color of our days. It, I mean, she's really talking uh, about Barry or somebody else. But I mean, she's really talking about the man in her life. And uh, by that time, there was a second man in her life. Um, and, and he is the dad of uh, Tracy and Shudney. So um, and a very important, uh, very important man in Miss Ross life. And he still is. So um, We Need You is really a song about a woman who is, um, you know, asking for the help of, of a man. And she says, in my dreams, you are here. When we wake, you disappear. So it's also about um, a, a father figure in, in a mother's uh, life, but in children's life as well. These both songs, uh, Leave a Little Room and All of My Life, um, are produced by Shirley Matthews. And I uh, found out by um, a young man, which I met through this uh, uh, exchange that I have with YouTube and uh, named Timothy Belavia and I really want to make a, a shout out to him. He's an amazing artist. He creates the most amazing dolls and he's making 80 Diana Ross dolls for the 80th birthday of our Queen Diana Ross and with such precision of all her costumes and he is a, a huge contributor to all of the Diana Ross album reissues and you see his name on all the albums including this one but on this one his name comes first so all the thanks um comes to him because he really contributes um to 
uh, all the research uh, that is done on these albums. And I had a, 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 the great chance of having an exchange with him. And so um, I was very, very fortunate. And so I thank him and I thank all of you because this is going through um, these videos that are that are made and that are making this little community. And I have so much fun exchanging with all of you. Um, the next song on the album is I Won't Last a Day Without You, song that I absolutely adore. It's been recorded by Shirley Bassey, who I adore. She's a, a great star in the UK, um, but she's also famous in America and a huge star in France. Um, and it's uh, also recorded by Streisand um, on on an album that she doesn't really love, but I think it's one of the only songs that she loves on that album called Butterfly. And this is written by Paul Williams, a very famous songwriter. So I Won't Last a Day Without You is a song that I absolutely love. Um, and again, it's a love song. And this is again to a man, but it could be sung to her own children. The next song is Little Girl Blue, which is the standard by Rogers and Hart. And this song was recorded for an album that she recorded at the same time, which is the album Blue, which was a collection of jazz standards that Diana Ross recorded following the immense success that the album Lady Sings the Blues had. And then it was shelved because they did not want Diana Ross to be put into a category of solely a jazz singer. They wanted Diana Ross to be an extremely popular singer. So um, this song was taken out of that collection and put into uh, the album Touch Me in the Morning. And I absolutely agree because I find that out of the entire blue uh uh, recording session Little Girl Blue is really stands out. It's really beautifully, beautifully sung, um, really heart wrenching. And this time I feel that Diana Ross is not singing either to her children or to the man she's singing about herself. And there's always similarities between the Barbra Streisand recordings and Diana Ross recordings and um, uh, and, and their careers in general. And Little Girl Blue, Blue was recorded by Diana Ross a little bit later on, but just almost at the same time for her album, The Way We Were. And it is a great recording as well. I have a preference for the Diana Ross version uh, because it's just very heartfelt. Um, then the song, My Baby, My Own. Uh, you have to listen to it. And, you know, it's just sung uh, like a gospel. You could imagine Mahalia Jackson singing this in a church. It is just, you know, my baby, my own, you know, deep in the darkest night, you are a shining light. It's just, wow, just amazing. And this song was recorded for the album To The Baby. And now today we are able to appreciate both albums because they're both on this um a, a, a reissue but when you hear it uh, it's just you just think it deserves to be on an album all its own and it is just just beautiful and um, Imagine is the uh, next song um, on the album this um, the Imagine was produced by Diana Ross this is the very first song that Diana Ross produced herself and um, it is the John Lennon classic and uh, it it is the most probably out of the whole album, the most modern pop contemporary song, uh, contemporary ballad. And um, and it's just a little bit, you know, it has a little bit more movement, shall we say, than the original by, by Lennon, which I never really appreciated here. I really do. But of course, anything Diana Ross sings. And this album ends with uh, a beautiful medley of the song Brown Baby by Oscar Brown and Save the Children, which is by Marvin Gaye, which was the incredible ode to, to children and to childhood um, uh, that Marvin Gaye sang on the um, phenomenal masterpiece album, which is what's going on. And um, a, a Diana Ross produced Save the Children. It's sung almost like a, a duet uh, in that I say that she's a kind of uh, singing over herself. So um, 
it, it is just sung with so much heart and uh, so much passion. And uh, Brown Baby is a song that is today so relevant because it's a term that is now used so much. But Diana Ross sings it um, when she says, I want you to walk with your head held high with such a deep voice. You, you, you wonder where... The, her voice comes out of such a little lady um, and it's just absolutely uh, incredible. I know I say that all the time, but it is just it, a, an incredible way of ending this beautiful, beautiful album, which is Touch Me in the Morning and that today we can hear in its complete form and also we can hear what Diana Ross' first project was, which was To The Baby. So it's always a joy for me to uh, discuss these albums that I absolutely adore and uh, uh, talk about the incredible career that Diana Ross has had. And I will see you next Sunday with a brand new album by Diana Ross. See you Sunday.